Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Bits episode. This is more of a PSA, especially for those of you who happen to drive or own older Tesla vehicles where public charging stations are being equipped with NAX handles, J3400. We're actually here at our office. This is our DC fast charger and we have equipped it with a J3400 or NAX style connector, which is different than CCS in shape but not in terms of communication. And what that means is in order to charge an older Tesla at a NAC station, you need to do a CCS retrofit. That sounds confusing. We're gonna break it down for you and explain to you everything you need to know about charging an older Tesla on public DC fast charging stations. This is Timon's 2018 Tesla Model 3 Performance. Timon, we did a whole video when you picked it up. We've done some other things with it. Yep. How have you been enjoying it? It's been great. Perfect daily, honestly. I mean, I was driving a GX470 that got 10 miles a gallon before this. So it's a big change uh, and it's been great. It's been a lot cheaper driving gas-wise. So one thing we noticed was you kept coming up to Fort Collins and like need to charge quickly and get down. And where we live, um, there's no real DC fast charging Correct. that's uh, you know really fast other than our own charger. We have the fastest charger in the whole city. Wow. Which is still not that fast. Yeah. It's only 180 <laughs> kilowatts. But um, essentially the, the issue was if you got here low, you'd have to like bring it over to the hub or my house and charge it in right. order to get back to Denver. Yep. Um, where because you could not charge off of our charger, even though the port would physically interface with your car. At some point. <laughs> uh, let's open. Is your car locked or go? maybe it went to sleep? But those of you who don't know, Tesla inlet ports look like this. And um, what is going on with your car? There we go, right here. So it, it can plug in. It looks like it should work, but it wouldn't work. And the problem is, in order to charge an older Tesla on public NAC stations, which are becoming increasingly popular, especially as Electrify America and IANA and who else is doing it? Everyone's switching right. NACs. EVgo just installed their first public NACs recently. And especially as that's all happening, I think a lot of Tesla owners are going to go, hey, especially if they own a first generation Model S or older Model 3s, they're going to roll up to these stations and go, hey, it's got a Tesla plug. Let me plug it into my and Tesla. And it doesn't work. And the car will say, hey, CCS isn't equipped on this vehicle. And you'll go, what the heck? I'm not trying to charge on CCS. I'm trying to charge on NAX. Right. That's what I thought at first, too. I was like, oh, I can just come here and charge. And then I thought for a second longer. And I was like, oh, that's never going to work. Right. So um, the first thing we need to do is back up and just talk about some communication standards when it comes to charging. So back in the day when Teslas first came out, they supported supercharging, of course, and Chatamo charging like a leaf has Ugh. and Chatamo uses single wire can to communicate between the charger and the charge controller in the car hmm. and superchargers also use single wire can to communicate between the two and so because they used a very similar communication standard between Chatamo and Tesla supercharging there was an adapter it was quite expensive it was like five or six hundred dollars at the time Jesus. and it would you know Chatamo to it wasn't NAX at the time, but Chatamo to the Tesla plug, right. and it would charge and work uh, just fine. Uh, later on, CCS came out, which is the plug that pretty much every other electric car today uses in the US. It's this um, relatively ugly, quite flimsy connector. Annoying to use connector. Just, you know, no question the NAX connector is a better connector. We've for sure. that out for yeah. a long time. But um, with CCS becoming so popular, and because there was a lot of German involvement in the development of the standard, it's actually significantly more secure, especially when you put on provisions on top of CCS on top of the communication called ISO 15118, which is like plug and charge and encrypted communications. And especially as EVs are becoming more popular, you need to think about security and data privacy right. and people stealing charging stuff or you know, hacking into your car. So th this all had to become a thing later on. And so CCS really supports, even though it's just a plug type, it's also a communication standard behind it. And with the advent of NAX, which is this connection over here, uh, when Tesla proposed the standard, um, you know, along with other automakers to SAE to become the J3400 standard, uh, it actually doesn't use the communications that Tesla used to use. It doesn't make any sense. 
So they now use the exact same communications as, ch as CCS. Is that just so they can swap them faster? Oh, well, it's just more secure. Uh, there's more benefits to it, like plug and charge, where you can do, you know, rather than, than relying on a Mac ID, uh, which in theory could be intercepted, it uses encrypted, um, basically encrypted services that go through a whole backend network of yeah, but checks. It also, would it also make it faster to change current chargers? that are swapping oh, over yes. from CCS. So if you, you know, like swapping a, a CCS to a NAX cable uh, is just a cable swap now. And the vehicles, the new vehicles since somewhere around 2020 or 2021, we'll show everyone how they can check, support CCS from Tesla. And so the first thing you need to check if you have a Tesla is this one setting. So let's go in here and I'll show you this really quick. So Jordan, you should probably hop up front and of course, Jordan owns a new Tesla Model 3, so it has all this, but you can see CCS cable button not intended to stop charging. Don't worry, that's not how I used it. So music off, and we'll come down here to software in your car. Every Tesla has a software button. You hit the car there, and then you go to additional vehicle information. And you'll see here, CCS and third-party NAX DC charging is enabled on this car. And it wasn't as of up until last week, right, Timon? Uh, yesterday. Yesterday. So um, <laughs> let's talk about what the process was. And can you pull out the adapter that they gave you yep. as well? So this is something I recently had done on my Model 3 as well. My Model 3 was a 2019 car, which required to be upgraded. So I was in a similar situation where I couldn't charge here. So you had mobile service come out to your house. Yep. And I did it through the app. You go to service in the app, and then it's an upgrade feature. And then mobile service comes out, which I think is standard for doing the CCS retrofit because all they do is change a module on the inside of this. They just pull the liner back and unscrew some things, unplug one thing and put it back together. It took all of 20 minutes, including an update. And then he handed me that and I paid through the app. Yeah, so it's a charge point e ECU, charge port ECU, basically to make this not reliant on single wire CAN, but to actually operate through the new standards of CCS, which then this communicates the same way. Um, let's open that up. Let's show everyone the adapter because this is essentially what, um, you know, the car thinks you're plugging into every time you plug in a third party NAX cable. Right, moment. and if you don't need this, I'm sure you could buy the part and do it yourself. Yes, there is a DIY um, for doing it, but for the adapter itself is only what, or the adapter is 200 bucks, something like that? Yeah. 250 is a lot like some, Somewhere around there. So and labor then, plus this for 350. Yeah, I, I think you just pay Tesla, you get a free adapter, they do it. They come to your house or whatever. You don't have to like order all these third party parts. They showed up in a Model S, yeah. Yep, yep. with a dent in the door. Oh, nice. okay. And this is the CCS adapter. So there's no real logic in here. It is just taking these pins and rearranging them to those pins. There's a couple thermistors and some other stuff, but there's no communication changer. So according to the car, you know, for example, if I were to, just so people get a better <laughs> representation. If it wants to open. Does it not typically work? There we go. If I am to plug in like this, the car has no idea if I'm doing this with the adapter or straight just plugging in Nax. They're effectively the same cable right now. Effectively to the car, it's the same communication. The adapter doesn't leave a signature or a, a, a breadcrumb anywhere in the communications. It's just the car has no idea. And so by you upgrading older Teslas to support CCS makes it also support third party Nax. Hmm. Now, uh, to show everyone how that process should work, which is nice, it's similar to a supercharger. You just plug it in, but then you have to then bill through the charging equipment. Now, I have this fancy bucket of cards here that should give us free there. charging. Oh, you've got yours. So we've got to hit start and, oh, no, it's not working. Still failed. We're dealing with this. We're trying to get access <laughs> control on here. But essentially, you would scan, tap, and however, you know, if you're on EA, you use their app. If you're on IANA, you use your credit card or whatever and then you get it going. So um, the upgrade is, is really important for older Teslas. However, not every older Tesla supports it. The early Model S's do not support CCS. And like we'll first remember. gen? Yep, like, like 2012, 2013. There was a gen two onboard charger that then can be retrofitted. Huh. So if you have a really early nose cone car, which actually is like similar to the one that we used in the i90 Surge, right. not possible. 
I mean, uh, everything is possible, not right. easily possible. Bring it to Alex and he yeah. can figure it out for you. You have to swap the onboard charger with the newer unit, which is its whole other conundrum of stuff. But essentially every Tesla from like mid 2013 is my understanding onwards has to get this retrofit in order to NAX charge. I think there's going to be some confusion among Tesla drivers as people that buy used Teslas because they're becoming really good deals that are going to roll up to an EA site, roll up to an IANA site, an EVgo site, and they're going to think it's a payment issue or something else. Meanwhile, their car does not support this charging. Right, but at least Tesla has it figured out to where like it will just route you to a supercharger. Yes, so that's the thing. Superchargers can speak both on the old standard and the new standard to communicate with any generation of Tesla, mm -hmm. which is really nice. And I've already seen some confusion with people thinking, you know, plugging into like an IANA NACS plug and they're, they're expecting their Tesla just works immediately. Like thinking plug and charge is a thing because right. the superchargers have that. Right, and currently Tesla does not support um, plug and charge off the supercharger network. They actually are doing a certificate exchange now. If you're at a version three uh, site, it will do the, ISO 15.11.8 communication, so Tesla's going on cool. that. It doesn't happen at every site, but they're, I think, probably just beta testing it in the background before it launches. But essentially, it's still early days, um, you know, for, for that to, for Tesla's to support plug and charge on other networks. I'm not even sure if the ECU has multiple spots, like file sizes, to have different certificates for different networks. Right. And until roaming's a thing, in our market, it's going to be a real problem. So, um, with all that said, if you have an older Tesla, make sure you upgrade to the CCS situation. I think it just makes life so much better. Yeah, now you can really go anywhere. Not that I was worried before, but it's just, in some spots, it's just easier to go to a non-supercharger. Yeah, I mean, here in Colorado, we have a fantastic third-party charging network that is um, you know, way bigger than the supercharger network, at least around us. So to have the optionality is really great. Yeah, especially in like the Littleton area. They're building two superchargers, but there's currently nothing available. Okay, interesting, yeah. So uh, with all that said, if you have an old Tesla and you plug it into a charger, now you know why it won't work. <laughs> and if you have that old Tesla, definitely upgrade and uh, wish you guys the best of luck out there. Just a little behind the scenes out of spec bits episode on why you should do the CCS retrofit because you can unlock every CCS charger and every third party NAX charger with one simple upgrade. And they at least came to your house and they came to mine. Yeah, so, so easy. Yeah, super easy. So thanks for watching. Any final thoughts, Jordan? So easy, time can do it. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can I do probably this could manually. have done it myself, yeah. but they might, they use Toolbox or their own software to upgrade your software. To tell the car that it's available. Yeah. 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 So. I just, for a couple hundred bucks and you get the adapter included. Yeah, just exactly. Tesla do Makes it. sense. Even us DIY guys are like, just do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Tesla's actually pretty reasonable when it comes to service costs like yep. that. All right, here we go. The actual first NAX charge. We got it working. How do you feel, Timon? Uh, no different than charging. No different. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a green blinking T, so that's how we know it works. This car finally is able to use its CCS capability without even using your adapter. Yeah, wow. But still nice to have the adapter. Yeah, I mean, I might as well just leave it in the car. You can go home. charge the i70 Diner now. Oh, wow. <laughs> if, you, if you go on a road trip Where to Kansas. <laughs> if you want to go to Kansas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're ripping 46 kilowatts. <laughs>